All right. Lecture eight, everybody. Let's get started. Welcome to Engineering 102. We are in week five. Um, a quick set of uh, housekeeping items. So number one, if you have not yet scanned the attendance code, please do so. Um, as I mentioned before class, today's tutorial is going to be a little different in that uh, the past two uh, AutoCAD tutorials we've been creating uh, drawing files from scratch. That's not what we're doing today. Today, we're going to be operating off of files that have already been drawn because the main theme of today's um, uh, exercise is editing. So it kind of makes sense to start with something already created. And then we're also going to do a couple other things related to creating text and printing files. Um, uh, the assignment for week three is going to be uh, the grade should be posted today, a little bit later today. I sent a few of you an email uh, where there were some hiccups on your submission, um, but I'll mention a few things for everybody uh, so that we don't have that happen again for, for the homework that's due today at 5 p.m. So number one, save your work. Um, there were a couple people that submitted blank files. I think what happened is they did all the work, they did all the drawing, and then they didn't save it. So please make sure you're saving your work. Don't upload the backup file, upload the drawing file, and actually upload. We had a couple people, I think they might have clicked the share link on the very top and included a link as opposed to the actual drawing file. Um, that works if you're sharing within AutoCAD accounts, but if you're uploading to something like Blackboard, that, that doesn't work. Um, for the assignment that's due today at 5 p.m., out of the 116 people, already 95 have submitted it, so it seems like everything's going uh, pretty well. Does anybody have any questions about the assignment that's due today? Everybody good? Okay, remember that's due at 5 p.m. Um, I don't have a homework assignment for you today, between today and Wednesday, because uh, I'll have a homework for you on Wednesday. That homework assignment will be due the following Monday, but next week we have a celebration. And remember, we don't have exams in college, we have celebrations of learning, so we're going to be celebrating on Valentine's Day. Monday, uh, we're going to have an exam review. And the way that I treat my exam reviews is um, I basically give you some understanding as to what the format of the exam is going to be like, and then I open the floor to questions, and you all ask whatever you want. So I plan to actually just open up an AutoCAD file, and if you have a question, like, I didn't understand how to draw arcs, we'll just draw some arcs together. Or I didn't understand how to draw a polyline, we'll just do it together. Okay? So uh, we'll just sort of do it live, and I'll probably upload that drawing at the very end to uh, uh, week six so that everybody has it. Okay? Does that sound good? All right, any logistical questions? Okay, um, so today's, uh, uh, the, the star of the show is editing, okay? Um, we're going to be doing text and plotting a little later, but we'll be spending most of our time on editing, okay? These are going to be the commands that we utilize for today's lecture, and I'm going to uh, adjust my lights here. Um, what I will say about editing is that uh, up until now, I think, We've, and we haven't gone through every single object, but we've covered the vast majority of fundamental objects in AutoCAD already, but we've talked about them from a creation standpoint, and we really haven't done, gone into editing them. And editing is where you really start to get fast as a drafter, and you really start to get more efficient. And I'll show you an example of what I mean by that today, by mixing a few of these editing commands to generate some geometry real quick. Um, but the, edit, the commands that we're going to use are move and copy, rotate, scale, mirror, offset, uh, trims and extends. Uh, we're going to do fillets and chamfers, and we're going to uh, uh, construct some arrays. Um, if you see it like where it says O slash offset, O is the keyboard shortcut for offset. So uh, M is the keyboard shortcut for move. But you can also just type these commands in as is, and it'll work. Um, we're also going to create some text. Um, so we're going to create multi-line text today. And I'm going to go through plotting today, some very basics uh, of plotting, okay? All right. Now, um, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to open up. So if you go to AutoCAD or go to uh, Blackboard, we're going to open up um, the following drawing, okay? So this is Lecture 8.1. And just so you know, there's a Lecture 8.1, and then there's also um, a Lecture 8.2, okay? This is Lecture 8.2. This is Lecture 8.1. We're going to spend our time focused on Lecture 8.1. So I'm going to take a minute or so to make sure everybody is able to open Lecture 8.1. Okay, I know you're working on some updates around over here. Um, is everybody else is everybody able to open Lecture 8? Does anybody else have any issues opening this file? Okay, go back over here. Everybody good? Okay. 
All right, so a couple things about the file. Let's, let's go through just some file structure navigation. So first off, you see some text, which we haven't done yet, which we will do uh, a little bit later today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the layers. So I've got four layers in this drawing. Two of them are locked, okay? And that's just because we're not going to use them. But I kind of wanted them locked when I provided the file to you so that um, uh, it wouldn't be messed with. But I want to be clear for today's lecture, this file you can sort of treat as your sandbox. So what I mean by that is we're not really going to get into draw a line at 0 0.5 units this way or this way. Today's pretty loose in, in terms of let's just draw or edit some objects and just have some fun with it. Um, so if you do something that you don't like or you know you quote unquote mess up the drawing, you can always just download it again and restart it. So today's just about getting familiar with the commands. Now, if you look at the drawing, there's sort of these boxes, so there's eight boxes, and within each of those boxes, we're gonna focus on a particular command or group of commands. And so we're basically gonna work our way across the top and then work our way across the bottom. So, um, I, I, ironically, I've got this big old handout. I actually probably don't need to refer to it very much, at least for this first part, because I'm gonna sort of just let the drawing navigate the script, because the, the handout sort of follows that anyways. Everybody good? All right, so um, the first thing I want to do is I want to focus on moving and copying, okay? Um, now, what we're, uh, so what I'll say about moving and copying is that these two commands uh, behave very, very much the same way. So that's why they're sort of grouped together. And, and some commands, as you see here, they're sort of grouped together, like trim and extend and fill it and chamfer. They sort of behave the same way, so they're sort of grouped together. Um, one thing I will say about move and copy that is also kind of true of all of the editing commands, or of most of them, is that they all kind of operate in a very similar fashion. Like, I've got a lot of text here that describes these commands, but I was actually surprised as I was writing this as to how much text I was just reusing over and over again because the commands operate the same way. But typically, if you, if you understand the structure of how like the move command works, you can probably reason your way through all of the others, okay, with a few slight differences. Um, the way the move command works is you basically do a, a interact through a series of, of, of steps. So the first thing that you'll do is you'll select the objects that you want to move. Um, and then once you select the objects that you want to move, you identify two points, a base point and an end point. And so in other words, I want to move the object from here to here, and it's that symbol. Um, to go from step to step throughout the command, you can either press the enter key or right click. That'll work as well, okay? So let's just start with this very first um, object over here, okay? So it says here, move with the base point on the shape. Um, by the way, if, uh, if you have not turned on object snap for this lecture, this is probably a good lecture to have it on. So I'm down here at the very bottom, the icon here that says object snap, I would turn it on. Um, as long as you have a few endpoints and midpoints and things like that uh, indicated, uh, then you're good. Okay? So we're going to try the move command, and we're going to move this object with the base point on the shape. And so let me explain what that means. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to execute the move command. So you can just type move and press enter or M and press enter. That's fine. And so the first thing that it asks you for is to select the objects. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this object. Okay. And when I'm finished, I can either press enter or right click. Right click will advance through the command as well. So we'll press enter. Okay. It asks you to specify the base point. So the base point, what I'm going to do is click a point, like let's say click this corner, and now you can see I'm moving it, and I click again. Okay, it's that simple. Okay, the nice thing about the move command is that I can do that for one object. I can move 20 objects. I can move, you know, uh, uh, with the uh, base point being on the object, or as you'll see here in a second, I can move with the base point not on the object. So just so you're aware, um, what I can do over here is I can move, let's say, let's move this. So we can, what I'll, another thing I'll show you is that when you're doing a command, you can select the command and then type move, and it'll automatically get into base pointer displacement. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point that's not on the shape, 
like click over here and it will still move. And if you notice, you'll see how it's moving. It's still using this point out here in space as the reference for which you're, you're locating the point. So we'll move it, I don't know, right here, okay? And again, with today's lecture, I'm really not trying to get into um, numerics or detail, like, like I'm not trying to do, you know, at three, less than 60 or anything like that. I mean, you can do that if you want. I mean, when, when you click that second point, instead of clicking a second point, you could say at three, less than 60, and that'll work too. I'm just sort of making sure that we're familiar with that command, okay? Um, let me just stop for a second to see if anybody's okay with this. Has anybody been able or had any issues executing the move command? Pretty easy, right? Everybody, how about over here? Everybody good? Yes. It is, to see how it's highlighted, it's selected. So you just right click. And then, and you didn't turn off. together because if you understand how to move you understand how to copy the copy command works the exact same way the only difference is that instead of moving the object it creates a duplicate the only other uh, uh, key difference about the the, uh, the uh, copy command is this so if I execute a move command let's let's do the move command again so we'll do move we'll select the object right click pick a point pick another point, and the command terminates. The command is done. It's, it's over, okay? Copy doesn't work that way. So the way copy works is if I go down here and I say, okay, let's do copy, copy. Let's select an object, right click. Let's pick a point, and you can see it will keep going until I either right click and hit cancel or hit escape. Okay, so the copy command will just keep working ad infinitum until you tell it to stop. Okay, all right, and just like with um, uh, with the move command, you can copy with a point on the shape or a point not on the shape. So I could take this copy command over here. I could select the object, but my base point could be like over here. You know, it doesn't have to be on the shape. Okay, so we'll just boop, 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 you know, add infinitum. And when you're done, just hit escape. Okay. And so the other thing that I guess I should mention is that you can move and copy multiple objects. So for example, over here, like I could hit the move command and instead of selecting one object, let's select all of them and move them all. You know what I mean? I can do that. I can also copy a bunch. So I can say let's copy all of these. I can do that too. Okay. So there's there's really sort of no limit uh, with that. Okay. You can go on and on. All right. I'll give everybody a sec to see if they are comfortable with this. Any questions? Everybody good? Is anybody thinking that the copy and move command would have been nice a couple weeks ago? Yeah, just wait. Just wait. So just so everybody's aware, the reason why I've held off on showing you these editing commands is because I wanted you to be strong in just object creation itself. Once you see how these editing commands work, you'll go, okay, now I can get some serious stuff done. Don't, don't worry, you'll see. All right, any questions on move or copy? All right, let's move on to the next box. Let's move on to rotate, okay? So the rotate command works very much the same way. Um, you select a base point and then a new point, but you, because of the nature of the command, you can also just numerically enter an angle, okay? So what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll rotate. Let's, let's start off by rotating this first point and let's click a point on the shape. So uh, by the way, um, if you notice, like every command that I'm executing, is up here in the top under modify and for you folks in the Mac, in the Mac world they're all grouped onto the left there's a big old group of modification commands all together so they're all together so we'll rotate let's rotate this object so again you select right click 
we're going to pick a point that's on the shape. Pick a point. And if you notice, what's now you can see what's happening is it's starting to rotate a point, and it is rotating it about the point that you selected. Okay? So, for example, you can do this one of two ways. You can click the screen, or you can say 30 degrees. I'm going to click the screen. So we'll click, I don't know, right there. Boom. Rotate it. I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, by golly gosh, gee, that would have been nice for that upside down triangle. You know what I mean? I know because I'm trying to get you to get familiar with just the object creation first, and then we'll, we'll get strong with, it, uh, with other commands later. Again, we can rotate with a base point off the shape. So we can rotate here. Let's rotate this object. And let's pick a point out here. Now you can see that's the, at the center. And what I can do, I my, left my phone on. I thought I turned turn that off. Um, with rotation, I can numerically assign a value. So let's rotate an angle of 20 degrees and press enter. And there you go. Rotate terminates after the, the first rotation. Because of the nature of the command, like with copy, you can copy over and over again. But with move, once you do a move once, it's done. Once you do a rotate once, it's done. Okay? Now, Something that's different about the rotate command is using a reference, okay? So I want everybody to watch up here, watch up here, okay? So let me show you how the rotate command works using a reference, okay? So we're gonna do uh, a rotate, and I'm gonna select these objects. Now everybody watch this, okay? Now it's asking for the base point. I'm gonna select this bottom corner. Now what it's doing when I select this bottom corner is it's saying, okay, that's the axis. See how the axis is sort of the bottom of the square? What if I want the axis to be something else? So see at the bottom where it says reference, where it says reference? I'm going to click reference, and I'm going to draw a line. And what I'm going to do is draw a line from the bottom corner, the bottom left corner, to the upper right corner. So I draw a line from here to here, and now that's the reference. Now it's rotating alongside that line that I've indicated. Um, using a reference for rotation is a really good way of aligning objects in AutoCAD that have sort of like irregular geometry. So it's a nice little tool to have um, if you're working with stuff where the geometry is a little weird, okay? Um, I'm going to give everybody a second. Does anybody have any questions on that? Did everybody ever hear about that? Yeah. Okay, so rotate. So, the, so you select the base point. Okay, now see where it says reference down here? So type R. You can type, or you max, you might have to type it out. So type R and press enter for reference. And then it asks for a rotation angle. Draw a line from the first point. Any more questions? Were you able to get it? Were you able to get it? Okay. okay. All right. I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay. So next one is scale. Okay. So what scale does is it uniformly either increases or decreases the dimensions. Okay. So essentially what you're doing is you're going to input a scale factor. And that scale factor will multiply the current dimensions of the object to create a new object. 
So if you input a scale factor of one, it will not change the object at all. If you input a scale factor bigger than one, it will increase the size of the object. A scale factor smaller than one will decrease the size. Scale factors have to be positive and non-negative. Okay, so scale factors are either greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so the way that it works, we'll go to scale. So the scale button's right here. You can just type out scale also as well. We'll select our object. We'll pick a point here on the object. And you can see, like, as you're moving the mouse, you can see what it's doing. Let's do a scale factor of three. Boom. Now the object is three times bigger than, you know, it initially was. We can also scale with a base point not on the shape. So we can scale... Um, right here, that's right here, and we can make that scale factor smaller. Let's do a scale factor of 0 0.2. Boom. Really, really tiny object. Okay? Really tiny. Okay? Um, the other thing that we can do is also use a reference. So I'll show you how a reference works with scaling. So the way that works is we'll do a scale. We'll select our object. Select a base point, but then what we're going to do is use a reference, okay? So we'll type R, and then the way R works, the reference works, is we'll draw a line, let's say, across the diagonals, and that'll be sort of our base, and then from then on, we can make the object bigger. So we can basically say, you know, here's the old length, here's the new length, and then AutoCAD will divide the two and use that as the scale factor, okay? So you can use that if you want to try and match an object to a new geometry, okay? Everybody give a scale? Any questions on that? Okay, next up, I believe it's mirror. Did I get mirror right? Did I get that right? Yep, mirror, okay. So what a mirror command does is kind of exactly what it sounds, it will create a mirror image of an object about a chosen reference line. So, the, for example, we'll create a mirror about, let's say, the left edge of this square. So we'll do a mirror command. We'll say along the left edge, so we'll draw a line from the bottom to the top. And then what's different about the mirror command is it'll ask you whether or not you want to erase the source objects. In other words, um, do you want there to be two objects or two groups of objects at the end or one group of objects? So um, I think most of the time, whenever I'm using the mirror command, I want to keep the originals because I'm wanting to, it's sort of like a way of duplicating them. So I say no on erase the source, ob source objects, and there we go. Now, the thing about the mirror command is, again, the base point does not have to be on the shape. And the line doesn't have to be vertical. I can draw a line like that. And what it'll do is it'll, again, use that as a mirror, create a new object reflected about that line. Okay? Well, I can do that, too. And we'll, we'll erase the source object this time. So if we erase the source object... First one goes away. Sound good? Any questions before we move on to probably one of my favorite commands, editing commands, or the ones that I find most useful, which is offsets? Am I good? All right, offsets. I tend to think that offsets are one of the most powerful editing commands. What an offset will do is it will create a uh, 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 an object or group of objects parallel to the object that you initiate to, to the base object, to the parent object, a certain specified distance away. Now, um, to, I think the best way of explaining an offset is to just show you. Now, just so everybody's clear, I've got two objects here. They both look the same, but the difference between them is that this is a polyline, and these are individual lines. So they're going to behave differently under an offset. But just to show you how the offset command works, let's work with the polylines first. 
So we'll do an offset. And the first thing that it's asking you, so this command's a little different because it's not asking you to pick an object. The first thing that it's asking you to do is to specify an offset distance. Now you can input a number, you can draw a line, you can use a reference, however you want. Um, I'm just going to input a value. So we're going to offset by 0 0.25. 0 0.25. And then what you do is you select an object and then you click a direction. And the, for, in the case of this star, we're talking about whether or not we want to offset outside the object or inside the object. Let's do outside, 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 outside. And by golly gosh gee, now what it's done is it has created concentric uh, 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 stars where each of the elements are parallel to their parent and they're 0.25 away. Now in the case of this star, what it's doing is it's creating new stars, new objects that are offset away. Does everybody see that? Now, this is how a polyline works. The way that lines work is they work the same way, but they're only going to work on an object by object location. So if I just keep the same command active and I start doing the lines and arcs, there's a little bit of a difference. See, like if I do this, let's offset, 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 but then I do this, offset, offset, offset. It's only doing it one object at a time, so I am going to get a little bit of that overlap. That's usually not a big deal. Um, as a drafter, you'll probably know what you want to do. It's just something you need to be aware of that polylines are going to behave a little bit differently than lines, okay? The only other thing I want to mention about the offset command is what happens sometimes with curves, okay? So if you look down here below, I've got what's called the disappearing curve, okay? So um, let me hit escape. Let's do the offset command again. And it's asking for an offset distance of 0.5. Let's do an offset distance of 0.5, so 0 0.5, okay? Now, if you notice, I have here a square, but it's got a rounded edge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this, but I'm going to offset it inside. I'm going to offset inside a couple times. So if you notice, the first time I do that, the rounded corner gets smaller, and then if I offset it again, it's gone. That rounded corner is gone, okay? Because think about what it's doing. It's just taking that geometry and it's squeezing it down. But the problem with the offset is that what if I take this inner square and I try and bring it back out? If I take this inner square and bring it back out, that curve is gone, okay? Because it doesn't, it's not, it's looking at it on an object by object um, uh, 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 perspective. So it doesn't know to keep that, that radius there. So you just need to be aware of that whenever you're using the object command. These aren't reasons not to use it. Again, I find the, uh, the, the offset command probably one of the most useful editing commands in my repertoire, but um, I just want you to understand fully how it works. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions on this? And am I going too fast? Is everybody along with me on this? Everybody along for the ride? Okay, I think this is going a lot smoother than if we had to create objects and do all this at the same time. Okay, if offsets are the, in my opinion, one of the most useful commands, maybe the next most useful command are trims and extends, okay? So let me explain what's going on here with trim and extend. I've got a series of magenta objects and a series of white objects, okay? So the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna treat the white objects as trimming edges, so or extending edges. So it's easier to sort of understand with trimming. So imagine, for example, these three magenta lines. Imagine the white line is where the scissors are going to go. That's kind, of, that's kind of what's happening here. Now, before we move on, one thing I'll say is that trim and extend are sort of inverse operations of one another. So if you're executing the trim command and you would like to extend, just hold the shift key and you can extend within the same command. So let me show you how the trim command works. It's, it's also probably one of the easiest commands to use because we'll just click the little scissors and the, the command's already ready to go. So what the trim command does is it looks at your drawing and it, it basically treats all of the objects as trimming edges. And so for example, if I just wanna snip away that line, it's done. If I just want to trim away that, it's done. 
If I just want to trim away that, it's done. That's it. it it's really easy to use. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can actually, like, if you click and hold, you create this little trimming fence, you can trim everything like that, okay? So, like, for example, with this multiple trimming edges, what's happening here is if I click right there, it's only going to trim where those objects are uh, uh, between where adjacent objects are. So it's only trimming right there, okay? Some of you are like, man, I wish I could have seen that. So I'll show you here in a sec what I'm talking about with versatility. Now, again, if you want to do an extend, you can either execute the extend command or just hold shift. So if trim deletes part of an object, extend will create more of it. So watch what happens here. If I hit shift, bam, bam, and, and, and again, AutoCAD's just going to the next object, so you can even go all the way over to this yellow boundary. And here's something else that's kind of cool. Look at this. So if I go to this vertical, this line right here, it's actually extending to the next, to the line I just extended, right? It's just going frame by frame, finding the next available edge, okay? So like with this right here, see this right here? It's not able to extend to this white line, so it's going all the way up, which is possible too, okay? It just goes to the next one. And if you want to keep extending, just click, whoop. just click, 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 just keep on going. So you can just keep on going, okay? With arcs, what it does, the way that the command behaves with arcs is it keeps the center point of the arc fixed and it just extends along, okay? That's, that's how the extend command works with arcs. So, can I show you something real quick? Everybody watch up here. My apologies if I flex a little bit, but I need you all to see this. So, this is where, so watch this. Everybody watch up here. So, this is what I mean when I say if you start mixing editing commands, you can really get some power in your drafting. So, for example, we're going to draw a rectangle. We're going to draw a circle. We're going to take that circle. We're going to mirror it. We're going to take another circle. We're going to draw a circle about like this. Then we're going to take the trim command. We're going to trim, 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 trim. Done. I'm not dropping my mic, so eraser drop. Um, you see what I mean? Like, bam, done. Very fast, okay? So you can get real quick with, with constructing objects very fast, okay? You see what I mean? So now, does this last homework seem like it could have been a lot faster? This, this is what I'm talking about. You kind of, so whenever you're approaching a drawing, you kind of want to think about it a little bit and go, hold on, hold on. Like, is there a faster way to do it? Okay. So, all right. Two more commands and I want to get into text. And if we don't have time to get into plotting, we'll cover plotting on Wednesday, but I, but I really want to cover these. Okay. Fillets and chamfers. Okay. Fillets. So, so what fillets and chamfers, so the reason I'm grouping these together is because they're all about controlling how the geometry of lines that intersect behave. You have a line that intersects with another line, how do they uh, uh, behave, okay? So often in engineering contexts, we will have edges that are either rounded or bellied, okay? To try and reduce the sharpness of an edge. So a fillet, will round the edge, okay? So let me show you. So what we'll do is we'll execute the fillet command up here. And let's do, so, okay, here's the fillet command. Now it has a default radius of one, but pretty much any time that you use the fillet command, the first thing that you need to be thinking is, I need to specify a radius, I need to pick a radius, okay? So we're gonna type R for radius and we're going to do a radius of 1.5. And then what I'm going to do is click one line, click another line. And then what it's doing is it's rounding that edge. Okay, does everybody see that? 
So think like, so if I asked you to draw this shape, there's two ways of drawing it. A polyline with lines and arcs and radii, or just draw a square and do a fillet. You see what I mean? A lot faster. So just, just wanted to, to throw that out there. Now, what does a chamfer do? If a fillet creates a rounded edge, a chamfer does a beveled edge. Now, I would say that one of the default ways of, a of using chamfer is to just join lines. So if we do a chamfer, um, if you look, whenever you run the chamfer command, look at the little gray area above the, key or above the command line. And it should say your current distance one is zero and your distance two is zero. If not, like type in distance and make them zero. Just press zero, enter, zero, enter. Because what that will do is this. If you have two lines out in space, just click one, click another, and it will join them. Okay? So it just takes that line and extends it, and it smartly figures out where's that intersection. Boom. So it's almost like you can break out your algebra homework and say, here's one line, here's another line, where's the intersection? You can do that. But really where the chamfer command shines is being able to bevel an edge. So we're going to do two different bevels. We'll do an equal bevel and an unequal bevel. I think I probably do equal bevels more at, at, in practice. But what we'll do is we'll do a chamfer. Let's do a distance. Of, let's do 1.5. So it asks for two distances, but we'll use, just use the same number twice. And then we'll click one line and another. And so you can see it sort of notches that edge a little bit. Okay? It sort of notches that edge. All right? Now, if you want an unequal distance, we'll do distance. We'll do 1.5 and 0 0.5. Now what, what happens is you pick the first line and then the second line and it sort of makes like an unequal bevel and whichever line you pick first has the longest edge, okay? Does that make sense? All right, any questions on chamfering or, or filling or better yet, any questions on any of the commands up until now? Everybody good? Did you got yours running? Everybody good over here? Okay, the last command I want to show you is an array. Now I'm going to level with you. I think of all the commands here, this is probably the least useful. And, and, I, and I say that because you can accomplish arrays with other commands like moves and copies and things like that. But if you need to construct arrays, the array command is a really good way of doing it. Okay, and so what an array is, it's just a repeated pattern of objects. And AutoCAD offers you three ways of doing it. We're not gonna do the path array in here. We're only gonna do rectangular and polar. But let me show you how they work. Um, let's do the rectangular array. So up here in the modify uh, uh, command, it's the one that looks like the little grid. Or you can type array, R-E-C-T. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick this object and we're going to right click, okay, and then you should see some stuff happen, okay? Before we do anything, let's just see if we get to this point. Now, what you should see happen, and I think it might be a little different for you math folks, but what you should see is a toolbar that pops up top with a lot of info about the array where you can start specifying things. I think for you Max, it might be a little different. Um, I'm curious if I got it, okay, it's starting to look, okay, you got this figure out, okay, good. Um, okay. Um, this is where we as the um, user can specify some things. So for example, uh, it says that we have four columns and three rows. Uh, I might change that to five and two. So we'll change this to five and this to two. And you can see that it's now created, you know, a new, uh, new set of blocks here. For the distance, I don't know, we can make this six and four, the distance between, and you can see now it's starting to change that up a little bit. That last set of groups on levels, ignore that because that's all about 3D. That's like taking it and extending it this way. We don't need to worry about that. 
So whenever you're finished, you just hit close array or hit escape. And now you have this group of objects. You have this group and it's, um, again, it's sort of treated as one object by itself, okay? For the polar array down here, the way the polar array works is, oh, sorry, wrong drawing. So we're gonna go down, we're gonna do polar array. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the window selection, I'm gonna select all these objects right here, all these white objects. And then it asks for a center point of the array. So I'm gonna pick the center of this. And now you can see what's going on. It's, it's basically arranging those in a pattern about this circle, okay? Now if you look up top, it says we have six items to fill 360 degrees. Let's change that to where it says six. Let's do 16 items. So let's do 16 items. And then, you know, hit close. And I know that is probably a rather ugly gear, but it is a gear. You know what I mean? So you mechanical folks, you can start to see where this might be a little useful in the process of creating gears. Okay? Does everybody see that? Okay. Um, I don't know if we're going to get to plotting today, but I do think we're going to get to text today. Before we move on, does anybody have any questions about this? And again, array, that's probably the one I'll just level with you. I mean, I've been drafting for about 20 years now. That's probably the one I, I, like, I had to remember how to do. And if you have a hard time following arrays, it's not a big deal. So, yes. What's that? Everybody good? Now click the second one. There you go. All right. I want to spend the rest of our lecture focused on the second drawing. So let's open up the second drawing. So just so everybody's aware, I just whipped this together. It's not nothing really magical. This is a drawing of a locator part. Um, I just, you know, sort of kind of made up, but really what I want to do is focus on an object that we haven't discussed yet, but is really important, which is text, okay? So um, the first thing that we need to do with text is we need to create a text style, okay? So um, in Windows, you can go to the annotation command or the annotate tab and click this little arrow right here under the bottom right there. Or you can literally just type style and press enter. And for you Mac folks, the button's on the left. It's the letter A with the paintbrush. Okay, so we're going to type style and press enter. Yep, hold on. Style and press enter. So what this is doing, uh, what this is doing is this is changing um, the default font, if you were, for a given uh, uh, text. Um, for most of you or some of you, it might say Arial. If not, it should say Roman S. Um, if you default, the default font that AutoCAD might populate is Arial, but it's, Arial's not really a common font for engineering drawings. A very common engineering drawing font is Roman S, okay? So if it's not already equipped for Roman S, I want you to change it to Roman S and hit OK. Is everybody good on this? Everybody good? Okay, now let me show you something, okay? So here's what we're gonna do, okay? I'm gonna go back to the home tab. Now I wanna, really quickly, I wanna make sure that you're aware of something, okay? There are two types of texts in AutoCAD. There is multi-line text and there is single line text, okay? Single line text is good for like little quick notes in here or there, but multi-line text is far more versatile. 
And so I'm going to focus on multi-line text today. And so you can literally just click the text button and it, cr it will create multi-line text. Okay, so everybody watch up here, watch up here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to draw a box from here to here, but watch. Before I do, I'm going to click the first corner and see before I click the second corner, it's asking for all these different like formatting rules, specifications. I want the text inside that box to be centered, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit justify or J and press enter. And it gives you a lot and there's a lot of different options. But really all this is saying is like top left, top center, top right, middle left, middle center, middle right. That's what these are. So I'm gonna click middle center, MC. Then I'm going to draw to the bottom and now I can start typing. Now remember, what's the deal about text on engineering drawings? Okay. All caps. So we'll hit my caps lock on and we'll say name. Then when I'm done, hit close text editor. And, and I'm doing all those, the, the letters, like I'm trying to make my name as long as possible and it should still fit in there. So I got kind of a long name. So I'm hoping that yours fits in there. If not, so a couple things that you can do. So let's say you type this out yes. and you go, oh man, I forgot to underline some text or whatnot. A quick thing about text, just take that text, double click it and you can, like highlight the name and go up here and underline it. You know what I mean? So it's, it's pretty easy, you know? Since we're running short on time, I'm gonna like, I wanna make sure that everybody can draw this first one. Then we'll prop, like we're not gonna have time to do plotting. We'll cover plotting real quick on Wednesday. Um, but I wanna make sure everybody's able to create this. There we go. So what we'll do is on Wednesday, we'll cover the real basics of how to take this drawing and plot it. I'll do that real quick. But maybe something you want to mess around with is see if you can create the rest of the text that is on this drawing. And if you look on the very last page, you'll see basically what I'm including. If I've got my name, the date, the title, the sheet. So I've basically created an incredibly basic title block. And what we'll do is we will um, also we'll create this block up here. If you look at the block up here, it's actually telling you what to write. It's saying, this text box is placed at 10.5 comma 10 with a width of four and a text size of 0.2, the top left justification. So you should be able to just type this text and create it directly. Does anybody have any questions? Got questions over here? All right, uh, well that's all I have everybody. We'll do plotting on Wednesday since we ran out of time. Um, and then I will see you all on Wednesday.